round two of the Australian Tarmac Rally Championship. Run by Mountain Motorsport and under the auspices of the Australian Autosport Alliance, the event was based in the picturesque town of Marysville, only two hours northeast of Melbourne. Featuring some of the best driving roads in the country, the Lake Mountain Sprint would provide competitors with the opportunity to test themselves and their cars over two days of challenging competition, all while having a bit of fun along the way. The weekend began Friday at the rally headquarters at the Marysville Golf Club with driver sign-on and scrutineering. It was also an opportunity to meet up with old friends, compare notes, check out the competition and talk about the challenges of the weekend ahead. But there would be very little time for socialising tonight with an early start, a very, very early start on Saturday. The first day of competition began with a non-competitive recce from the Lake Mountain ticket booth through to the area known as Arnold's Gap. And as the cars lined up, there was plenty of anticipation and more than just a few nerves. Yeah, it is icy. Um, I mean, I, I don't mind the challenge, but um, you know, it's 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 a bit of an unknown when you when you got semi slicks uh, on these sort of roads. So, so um, you know, they get good grip in damp conditions, but I think you know the icy uh, patches might might be able to you know might get you. So, no, it's um, it, it's I'm looking forward to the challenge, but it's 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 also you know a bit scary. Now, I've done a number of these rallies now. This is probably the fourth time I've been to this. This event but this is the first time it's been so wet but uh, as you can tell by the accent um, the wet just adds a bit more fun um, yeah you do a circuit race you see the same 20 corners over and over and that's good fun but on, on these sort of events you've got 50 100 200 different corners each stage and each one's a different challenge and um, as a driver and, and, a, and a navigator it's a team effort to uh, get the best speed out of the vehicle don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's my first race and I'm quite excited to be the co-driver. So has your husband done any of these races before? Oh, he's been done it for a while now. I don't know how many years, but 10 years. There you are, 10 years. He has been doing it for 10 years. So you're in pretty safe hands then? <laughs> I don't think so. The run was a chance to shake down equipment and assess the conditions that lay ahead. And it soon became obvious that the conditions were very, very challenging indeed. At the end of this non-competition section, no less than five cars had already crashed. The wet conditions and black ice had made some parts of the course almost undrivable. And an early victim was the Tirana of Mike Downey and Jason Vanderacker, depriving the event of one of its most spectacular and popular entrants. With conditions at the top of the mountain so difficult, the decision was made to cancel the first three stages and start the day with stage four, the run from Arnold's Gap down to the finish line back at Marysville. With conditions so slippery and with plenty of moisture still in the area, conventional wisdom would say that the all-wheel drive competitors, led by the Audi TTRS of Max Williams and Bruce Bush, and Tim O'Connor and Steve Glennie in the Subaru WRX, would clearly be the cars to beat. But conventional wisdom hadn't accounted for the Mazda RX-7 of Adam Kaplan and Mary Hughes. In a remarkable piece of driving, the Alan Moffat lookalike car finished the first section in first place over the Audi and the Subaru. Competitors moved to stage five, the short run from Marysville through to the State Forest turnoff. In the drier conditions, Craig Dean and Jenny Cole could use all the power of the big Ford Mustang and moved into contention by setting the stage as third fastest time. An Audi TTRS was second, but it wasn't the Williams Bush car, but a similar car of Barry and Jan Smith. But the fastest time went to the O'Connor and Glennie Subaru with a 3 minute 42.9 second run. 
Williams and Bush finished the section in fifth place, but Kaplan and Hughes were further back in the pack, finishing the stage in seventh place. With stage six also cancelled, the drivers went to lunch at the Lake Mountain Resort with the Kaplan and Hughes RX7 still in the lead, but the Max Williams and Bruce Bush Audi had closed the gap. The O'Connor Glenny Subaru was also a very real contender after their good stage five performance, ahead of the Calder and Dale Mitsubishi Evo 10. After lunch, the cars moved on to stage seven, from Arnold's Gap car park through to Marysville. And the conditions at the top of the mountain had actually got worse, with rain, sleet, fog, hail, and even snow providing a huge challenge for both competitors and the hardy team of volunteer officials. Remarkably, despite the conditions, the Kaplan and Hughes RX-7 was still on top, and not just by a small margin. The pair managed to finish the stage more than seven seconds clear of the Williams and Bush Audi, with the O'Connor and Glenny Subaru still in third. Conditions were at their worst as the cars began stage eight. The run from Marysville back to the top of Lake Mountain. Again, the Mazda was fastest, but the Williams and Bush Audi had closed the gap and now appeared the major challenger to the RX-7. The classic battle was still being dominated by the gorgeous sounding Datsun 240Z of Devonish and Duplessis, with the Mercedes 450 of Jeff Nichols and Gary King second in class, just edging out the big Jaguar of Mark Hammond and Lisa Dunkerton and the Porsche 911 of Tim Prisabilla and Dana Sillins. While the conditions were tough, they were also providing drivers with lots of fun and plenty of sideways motoring, like in the classic Mark I Escort of David and Jackie Thurwell. The final stage of the day would start from Arnold's Gap and return the cars to Marysville. And it was here that the Williams and Bush car would make its move. At the end of the short but difficult downhill run, the Audi topped the times, leading home the Calder and Dale Evo 10 by just over 15 seconds. O'Connor and Glennie were once again third, but the leading Mazda could only manage a fourth fastest time to set up an exciting battle for day two.
With competition over for the day, the competitors and officials made their way to the rally headquarters at the Marysville Golf Club for dinner, a few laughs and a charity auction to raise funds for the City Life Suicide Prevention Charity of motorsport chaplain Mark Bateman. Several items went under the hammer, mostly provided by Philip Brock. Well, I'm the um, touring car uh, division host, and what that means is we have a lot of people here who run on the the back of the, the actual competitors. So once the, the actual competitors for this Australian Tarmac Rally Championship, people have gone on their, their leg, um, five minutes later we do our thing, and... Um, what it does is allow people to drive on these great roads in their own car with a minimum amount of regulations and cost to just experience this whole thing of learning how to drive a car properly. And that's, that's what I look at going, it gives them the chance to, to explore what they can do as a driver. And um, I'm very passionate about that. I think it's very important for them. Well, you certainly, they were certainly testing their driving skills today. Dr- uh, conditions out there during the day were, were pretty tricky. What was it like? Well, I'll be a little bit um, maybe antagonistic. There were some people here, but the first thing we did today was what they call a shakedown. In the shakedown, we had five competitor cars and one touring uh, car crash. From then on, we had, I think, one other car for the rest of the day. So in other words, people got their normal, you know, silliness happening early on, um, which I don't quite understand because, and I've spoken to the organisers, and I think what we need to do is just say to people going, hey, what are you actually trying to do? You don't start off flat out and then back off. You start off in a very uh, intelligent way and have to just work out what you want to do, how you can improve your driving uh, during the day. But like, look, it was a good day. Fantastic roads. Look, it was very difficult. We had rain, snow, all that stuff. It was wet on the top of the mountain the whole day. But, you know, you drive to the conditions. And I think that, and I'm not trying to say I'm a hero, but that's what everyone's in the same boat. Whatever, whenever you hold a section or a stage, you are all in the same boat. So therefore, just be smart and just enjoy what you're doing. After another early night, another early morning. Sunday would see the rally's longest stages, starting with the run from the start in Marysville to the Lake Mountain Summit. Conditions had improved, but things didn't quite go as planned for the overnight leaders. The Kaplan and Hughes RX-7 finished the stage in an unfamiliar sixth place, just in front of the classic lead in 240Z of Devonish and Duplessis. Thankfully, though, for the leaders, their closest rivals also struggled, and the Williams and Bush Audi was even further back in 13th place. Fastest car on the stage was the Calder and Dale Evo, with a run of 10 minutes, 24.70 seconds. The O'Connor and Glennie Subaru was next, with the Barry and Jan Smith Audi TT RS leading home the similar car of Michael Minchell and Paul Vandermey. Stage 11 was the first run to Cumberland from Arnold's Gap, with plenty of sweeping bends and fast-flowing sections that looked suited for the more powerful cars. Cars like the Craig Dean Jenny Cole Mustang, who were comfortably leading the showroom two-wheel drive class. They'd finished the section fifth fastest. The Kaplan and Hughes Mazda could only manage fourth, despite conditions that seemed almost perfect for the RX-7. The all-wheel drive brigade was once again setting the pace. O'Connor and Glennie were again in third in the Subaru, with a time of 8 minutes 39.80 seconds. Williams and Bush were still in contention for outright honours with an 8 minute 32.70 second pass to put the Audi TT into second place. But again it was the Calder and Dale Evo that set the fastest time of 8 minutes 29.90 seconds setting up a fight to the final run with just four stages remaining. By the time the 12th stage was ready to start, conditions at the bottom of the mountain had improved. But at the top there was fog thick fog that made life difficult for everyone. I got 
got it, yeah, I got it, yeah. In the changeable conditions, the Honda Integra of Tyson and Clayton Alderhoven had their best run of the event. Their 11 minute, 8.10 second run taking them into sixth outright and second in the two wheel drive showroom class. Rob Devonish was still dominating the classics, the 240Z in its element on the fast sweeping bends. The Dean and Jenny Cole Mustang finished the sector in fourth place, just behind the Williams and Bush Audi. The Calder and Dale Evo was making a late run on the event lead and finished second, but it was again the Mazda of Kaplan and Hughes that returned to the top of the standings with a blistering pass. A 10 minute 32 second even run re-established their lead with only three stages remaining. For most however, the main challenge in the thick fog was just surviving till lunchtime. We couldn't see anything, it's, uh, take a look around. it's, a, it's a little foggy. but. Um yeah, road's drying up, much better than yesterday. Uh, challenging though, very challenging. But we're having fun. It was blind. It was blind from the ticket booth up. It was just fog. Um, yeah, notes are good. As the drivers headed inside for lunch, the mechanics were hard at work preparing for stage 13, which would see the run from Arnold's Gap back to Marysville. It was to be an unlucky 13th for the New South Wales pairing of Anthony and Tony Rizzo. Soon after the start, their WRX slid off at relatively low speed, but putting an end to their Lake Mountain Sprint experience. The Dean and Cole Mustang was again consistent and finished the stage fifth fastest, just ahead of the O'Connor and Glennie Subaru. The Devonish Duplessy 240Z was still dominating the classic section, but the Hammond Duncan and Jaguar was still entertaining and terrifying spectators and officials as Mark Hammond threw the car around the tight mountain roads.
Up front, the battle was far from over. The Kaplan and Hughes RX-7 could only manage a third place on this section, with the Calder and Dale Evo leading the Mazda home by a scant one-second margin. But the fastest car was the Williams and Bush Audi TT, setting up a fight to the finish over the final stages. With only two stages remaining, the conditions were the best they'd been all weekend. There was even a brief burst of welcoming sunshine as the cars began the run from Marysville to Cumberland Junction. In the fine conditions and with plenty of fast-flowing corners, the Dean and Cole Mustang was in its element as the big Ford V8 sang a song that resonated throughout the trees and valleys, delighting the faithful and frightening the local wildlife. The O'Connor and Glenny Subaru finished their run in second place, but they were no match again for the flying Mazda. The RX-7 screamed through the bushland to easily take the fastest time of the stage, a good 11 seconds faster than anybody else. It was a performance that almost assured the Sydney pairing of the rally victory, but as we saw in this year's Le Mans 24-hour race, it's never over till the final flag falls. A long weekend was finally drawing to a close with the final stage, the run home from Cumberland back to Marysville. Once again, the Devonish and Duplessis Datsun was dominant in the classic class, with the Jaguar in second and the Prisbilla and Sillens Porsche third quickest. In the fight for the outright, the O'Connor and Glenny Subaru finished the stage fifth fastest, with a time of 8 minutes 26.30 seconds. The Audi battle saw the Barry and Jan Smith machine come up just short, their 8 minute 24 second run good enough for fourth place. The pairing of Dean and Cole was once again fast as the Mustang raced into third place on the final stage with a run of 8 minutes 20.90 seconds. All eyes were now on the Williams and Bush Audi. A quick run of 8 minutes 15.60 seconds good enough for a narrow second place, but not quite enough to take the win. Once again it was the Mazda that came out on top. An 8 minute 14.20 second pass putting the final touches to a remarkable performance in conditions that had seemed less than ideal for a car of this style. As Philip Brock led the final touring group home, the winners had already packed up, were on a trailer and making their way back to Sydney. For everyone else, there was still one more chapter of the story to play out. The awards ceremony at the Marysville Golf Club. A final chance to swap stories, tell a few white lies, congratulate and commiserate. But most of all, a celebration of an event that had delighted all who took part. Yeah, it's been a very well organised. Uh, Peter um, Washington and Ursula have done a fantastic job. Uh, this is our first event with, with uh, Mountain Motorsports and uh, I've, I have to say that, um, you know, right from uh, the first phone call I made to Peter um, and, and, and uh, the follow-up phone calls, it's just been uh, very, very easy to get sorted. Uh, he's been very helpful and and, uh, and also the, the staff he's had here to help out with the AASA guys and, and all the volunteers. Uh, everyone's been just on top of their game. You know, information was passed down the line very quickly when, when uh, things were amiss on track. So, uh, so that's, that's really important to get those, those, uh, those, um, uh, that, that information in a timely manner. And, and uh, it just flowed, flowed really well, despite the fact that we had snow uh, falling uh, on a couple of stages on, on day one. So, so it, was, it was a really well put, 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 put together event in, uh, in very trying conditions. The, the event's been really good. Um, nice relaxed atmosphere um, and good competition and uh, the event sort of flowed pretty well. You know, apart from the bit of weather that was around yesterday, which nobody can do anything about, the event today was certainly really uh, enjoyable. Look, these events are very, very entertaining. I mean, the people that run them are excellent. Um, you know, we do Targa and we do these events, and it's just sort of, it's just so easy and, and relaxed and good fun. Yeah, I really enjoy it, and it's we've made lots of nice friends since we've been doing the rallying, and um, yeah, it's, it's great fun. Yeah. The RX-7 had finished the weekend on top, but the fight for the minor placings was extraordinarily close, with less than a second covering the next five cars. The Williams and Bush Audi TT took out second, just a breath ahead of the Subaru of O'Connor and Glennie. 
<coughs> wet weather is uh, something that uh, four-wheel drives actually quite enjoy. <laughs> Um, it's, um, it's it's one of those things that uh, you learn to drive the car to its uh, its, its maximum, and um, you just be careful and and drive it as uh, as fast as you can, but obviously as safe as you can. The Calder and Dale Evo was next to give us four different manufacturers in the top four. Barry and Jan Smith in their Audi TT were fifth, just ahead of the Dean and Cole Mustang, in another impressive performance in a car that on first glance was not entirely suited to the conditions. Michael Mitchell and Paul Vandermey bought their Audi home in seventh place to make it three Audi TT RS in the top ten. The Datsun of Devonish and Duplessis were next, winning the classic class after dominating all weekend. We um, started off the r rally with um, uh, an interesting soft setup, so we thought, oh, it'll be wet up here, so we put some nice soft uh, hill climb tyres on her, and away we went. So we had a good, good first run up the hill, um, where a lot of other people sort of seemed to fly off the mountain. Um, but um, yeah, after that it was, yeah, it just got better, except for Saturday afternoon we had a bit of a spin on the way down. So that did a bit of damage, so my son got to and realigned the front wheels and off we went again. So and it just got better from there. The pairing of Greg and Rhonda Burrow came home in ninth place, just clear of the Charles Knott Roger Harrison TVR, who rounded out the top ten. The 2016 Lake Mountain Sprint will be remembered as one of the most challenging ever. Rain, frost, fog, even snow. But it was also one of the most enjoyable. And if the wide smiles on the faces of the competitors is anything to go by, they'll all be back for more in 2017.